When people think about Israel, they think about war, or religion, or even falafel. But to me, when I think about Israel, I think of the triumph of the human spirit. Israelis, surrounded by enemies, have turned a desert with hardly any natural resources into a flourishing, productive, and caring society. When I think about Israel, I think about a country beyond the conflict cliches and controversy, and that's where I want it to be. My name is Tal Ben Shahar, and although I was born and bred in Israel, I spent much of my life living and working abroad. Working in Asia, studying in the US and the UK, and touring the world playing professional squash. I received my PhD from Harvard, and after completing my studies, I went on to teach there. Ben Shahar teaches a course at Harvard called Positive Psychology, the Science of Happiness. He began the class four years ago, and it became the most popular course on campus, enrolling 1,400 students. He teaches Harvard University's most popular class, Positive Psychology. Please welcome to the show, Tal Ben Shahar. Tal? It was very exciting to know that what I was thinking about, writing about, and teaching was having an impact. My passion is teaching and to focus on, on the positive things in life. In spite of all this, I decided to move back to Israel. The main reason for this move, I would say, is family. For me, Israel is all about family. Uh -oh. My wife and I had a most wonderful childhood growing up in Israel, and we wanted our children to have that too, to be near their extended family. And when I came back, I realized that the time and distance away enabled me to see Israel in a whole new light. The Israel I came back to was not the Israel I left. I was amazed at what happened here during the 14 years I was away. The country had gone through another intifada, another war in Lebanon. The peace treaty was signed with Jordan, and Rabin was assassinated. I also noticed social problems like a housing shortage, a shrinking middle class, and a rise in poverty. The country seemed so much smaller, the soldiers so much younger. In the time I was away, tens of thousands of Ethiopians and hundreds of thousands of Russians had come to Israel. All of a sudden, I could hear so many languages spoken on the street. English, Russian, French, Amharic, Arabic, Spanish, Portuguese. And the fields where I used to play as a child are now home to some of the many high-tech companies that are all over the country. Israel had transformed. Israel had not only joined the 21st century, in many ways, it was now leading the way. When you look at the NASDAQ, companies are listed from around the world. There's one country, though, that truly stands out, and that is Israel. And Israel is the fastest growing, one of the most dynamic entrepreneurial and innovation-based economies on the planet. The sky is the limit for inventors in Israel. Israel has been a remarkable achiever in terms of technological innovation. Israel has developed some of um, the world's leading technology. Even if you don't live in Israel, chances are you have something that was made here. If you just look at it on a, on a daily basis, how much stuff do you use in your daily life that has its origins in Israel, it's, it's rather remarkable. Many of uh, the microprocessors invented by Intel were designed in Israel. Nowhere in the world outside of Silicon Valley will you find more technology startups. People come from all over the world to look for Israeli technology. Warren Buffett shelled out more than $4 billion for Iskar Metalworking, the largest purchase that legendary investor has made outside the United States. I, I understand that their facilities are incredible, but I would expect that. Intel developed here, HP has a center here, Google is very successful here, Microsoft as well as the research and development. If you actually do the math, Microsoft is almost as much an Israeli company as we are a U.S. company. This country has been such a beta site or a laboratory for solving uh, both national and international problems since its inception. Why not forget the gas altogether? This electric car may be the answer to high gas prices. 
No gasoline needed. The technology coming out of Israel is being used to connect the world, green the planet, save lives, and have fun. Wow. Wow. For instance, Kinex lets me use my body as the controller. This very cool technology was developed in Israel and then bought by Microsoft. It's a workout. I know that I look silly, uh, but other than that, I had a lot of fun. When Microsoft was looking for the next best thing in innovation, they turned to Israel. Israel was able to provide the answer. They were, they were able to provide this innovative technology that really wowed everyone at Microsoft, and they said, yes, this is going to be the next best thing, and it was. It's the fastest selling gaming device in history. Oh, wow. A lot of innovation has come out of Israel. In a way, Israel is known to everybody as a center of innovation, as a place where you can find more innovation than anywhere else in the world per capita. If you look at countries that are represented in the stock exchanges, the ranking today is number one, of course, the United States. Number two is China. And number three is Israel. The US, China, Israel. Looking at our size, how is it that Israel, with its seven million people, has the third largest group of companies traded in New York? This is an amazing fact for a tiny country to actually eclipse all the nations of Europe in the creativity of its entrepreneurial leadership.